I'm Dr. Winnie King and welcome to Keeping Kids Healthy. Now this is a program about your children's health and it comes to you from the lobby of the Children's Hospital at Montefiore in the Bronx. During an average week in the United States, there are over 8,000 preterm babies born. That's babies that are delivered prior to the 37th week of pregnancy and often weigh only two to four pounds. Many times, these babies have to spend the first few weeks or even months of their lives in a neonatal intensive care unit, which we call a NICU. Now, life in the NICU can be terrifying for new parents, but it can also feel like a safe place for them and their little babies. Come with us as we visit one family that gave birth to premature twins. We weren't totally surprised that they were premature, but we were surprised at how premature. Uh, being twins, we expected them to go about 38 weeks. Uh, they ended up coming six weeks early, so that was a bit of a shock. Samantha and Gerard Masconi came into the world six weeks earlier than expected, weighing just a little over three pounds each. Immediately, the Masconi's whole world was turned upside down, and the NICU became the focus of their lives. You realize how fragile their little lives are at that point, and it's, you know, it's, it's heart-wrenching, it is. It's really heart-wrenching. Initially, the parents are very frightened and we offer them as much emotional support as we can. The Masconis learned firsthand how unpredictable life in the NICU can be when Gerard developed an infection. I was feeling very good because they were born, they were never on oxygen. Things were going very, very smoothly. But it's amazing how quickly uh, things can turn around. A simple thing like a staph infection uh, can cause his heartbeat uh, to get erratic which is extremely frightening. It is a roller coaster ride and quite often the baby could take three steps forward and four steps backward. The hardest part is leaving them, you know, because you come and you spend a few hours and then you go home and you go home and they're not with you, you know, so that part, that part's kind of hard. Going home at night is tough for parents, but at least they know their preemies are in good hands in the NICU. That's why taking the babies home can be scary. A lot of moms um, are very frightened, but they have the assurance of the monitors and the staff. Uh, so when it comes close to discharge, a lot of times um, the moms um, will get nervous. We do offer that a night or two before the babies do go home, that the moms room in and we give them a private space with their baby and just knowing that the staff is in the next room to help seems to calm them quite a bit. It'll be great to get them home, so we're, I'm very anxious to get them home. But given that we saw how delicate their systems are, I think we'll be a little bit more careful. It's just hard to explain. It's the feeling that comes over you, and you just can't imagine them not being here now. You know, you just can't imagine them not being a part of your life. Well, we made that visit to the intensive care unit just over a week ago, and while the Moscone twins are slowly gaining weight and improving, they're still in the hospital, so the Moscones couldn't be with us here today. But here with us now is one mother who knows very well what the Moscones are going through. I want you to meet Tracy Jackson and her beautiful 21-month-old uh, daughter, Madison, who was also a preemie. And uh, Madison is not even remotely interested in what we're doing here today. She's got her own agenda, so we may have to help Madison to leave us. Her uh, older daughter, Helena, is here with us also, so she may take Madison away if Madison decides that there's some more interesting things going on off the set, so bear with us. Also joining me is Dr. Uh, Deborah Campbell, and uh, Dr. Campbell is the Director of Neonatology at Montefiore, and uh, she also works with Madison in a program called LEAP, and uh, she, this program monitors children who were born prematurely, and thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it, and thank you, Ms. Madison. Let's um, talk a little bit about what we heard, uh, the, some of the anxieties that go on with parents when they have babies in the, in the NICU. I mean, the NICU is a fabulous place. They do wonderful things, and it's hard to leave your baby 
baby when you've got a newborn, but at least you know they're in a great place. But then you have to take them home. What are some of the concerns that some of these parents will share with you? Parents of, of premature babies actually have many concerns. Uh, those, as any other sure. parent would with a new baby in terms of feeding, diapering, uh, just the baby adjusting to being home. Yeah. But on top of that, babies who've required a stay in the NICU, um, will, the parents will oftentimes have additional concerns. The baby's breathing, how well they're able to feed, um, even just going home without all the monitoring and the equipment. Yeah, you sort of feel like you need all of that just to make sure they're okay. How about you, Tracy? Did you feel that way when you were ready to take your baby home? I was nervous about that because I, I depended on the monitors while I was holding her mm -hmm. to make sure everything mm -hmm. was going okay. When you go home, you don't have that. You just have... It's just you. It's, it's just all me. about you and that baby. <laughs> just me and yeah. just watching her closely and making sure that, you know, everything's going well, yeah. feeding. And, and well, so. Dr. Campbell, what, what would you say is the most important thing that parents need to know when you're making that transition, taking your baby home? I think the most important thing for parents is that uh, they understand that it will take time uh, for the baby to adjust, for themselves to adjust to having the baby home. Depending on the health care needs of the infant, uh, they may have to bring home a baby on oxygen or on a monitor uh, or may not. So we do tailor the advice we give to families based on the particular needs of their baby. Uh, but I think the greatest is really just that adjustment and becoming comfortable with having the baby home um, and feeling confident in themselves as parents. Well, I think the biggest concern is that something might go wrong. The baby spikes a fever, the baby starts vomiting, you know, something changes. What type of contingency plans do you help parents set up in advance before they take the baby home? I think the most important thing for um, any parent, but in particular a, a parent with a child uh, who's been sick or is born premature, Surely, is to have an identified pediatrician, a primary care provider for that child, pediatrician, family physician, who can know that child well, who the family can um, feel comfortable talking with, calling um, for advice for their concerns. One of the things that parents sometimes do when something happens at 3 in the morning, it doesn't always happen at 3 in the morning, it can happen at 3 in the afternoon, right? You can't get hold of the pediatrician, you don't know where to go. Sometimes they'll go to a clinic or they'll go to a hospital that's the closest, but they don't have a pediatric service. What are the things that you should do 3 in the morning, your baby's hot, hot, tot, you don't know what to do? Well, I think that the first thing, as I said, it, it is important that the family first try and contact the pediatrician. Uh, who will clearly know their child the best. Uh, if the pediatrician is not available or they're not able to make immediate contact, call the NICU uh, where the baby had been. The staff there does know the baby, and I know certainly our unit and many of the, the NICUs across the country encourage the parents, let them know that we remain there for them. Um, so at least they can raise their questions, raise their concerns. We may then direct them to uh, take the baby to the nearest emergency room um, or th bring the baby to the hospital, whichever is appropriate for their concern. With, uh, with Miss Madison, who, by the way, is no longer here, and that's a hint <laughs> of some of the issues that you're dealing with with her being 21 months old. Child is gone, yeah, and she's, she's moved gone. on to other more exciting things. <laughs> yes. But as she's gotten older, you've had to deal with different things. Tell right. us about that. Uh, basically, her height, her weight mm -hmm. is, an, is still a constant issue with her. Uh, she's a little tiny little thing. How much does she weigh? She was 2 pounds, 6 ounces when she was born. Okay. Now she's 18 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I still have the concern with the weight, her feeding. Um, she still only takes four ounces at a time. Does she interact with other children her age appropriately, or she oh, yes. hangs with younger kids? Well, we have. She has three older siblings at home, and uh, when my friends come that have babies her age, she knows to you know they hug, they play, they swap bottles, yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, Dr. Campbell, what kind of support systems are there in place for the families? I mean, obviously you're supporting the baby, you're doing everything for this baby. What do you do to help the parents emotionally through this? Well, I think that uh, what's most important is to be able to provide parents opportunities to meet and talk with other parents uh, who are in a similar situation, who have premature babies. One of the things that many of our families uh, confront is the fact that they receive lots of unsolicited advice, oh, sure. usually from people who have never seen a preemie, right. have no certainly right. have never been involved in the care of a pre premature child, yeah. um, and are full of wisdom, mm -hmm. if you will, yes, in yes. terms of how they should be caring for that child, what they should be doing. Uh, and that can be very stressful for families. Yeah. Now, uh, you are in a very unusual situation uh, because, Tracy, you have 
had two children that were preemies. Helena, who thank God was here because mm -hmm. she's got uh, little Madison, she was also a preemie. Mm -hmm. Now, how old is she now? Uh, well, she, it would, um, Victoria is actually the one that okay, was Okay, Victoria. And how old is she? She's 10 now. She's 10. Mm -hmm. And then little Madison, we know, is 21 months. So there's a, quite a, an age span there in right. terms of the, the, the years and also the medical service. Right. Tell us the difference mm -hmm. between having a preemie back then and having a preemie now. Uh, I didn't have the, the overnight, the room in at the hospital. I was just, they told me to, I can bring her home, and I brought her home. Um, other than her usual pediatric visits, I didn't have anyone like to come in. Uh, I didn't have the early intervention. How did you feel, you know, back then, what some eight years ago, when you had a premature baby? I mean, how did it affect you? I mean, were you completely depressed about it, or were you? Did you feel like it was going to be okay? Uh, I was depressed while she was there, you know, having to leave her there and. As the other parents spoke of, you leave and then you come yeah. back. That was hard. I could imagine. I mean, the big thing is having the baby and taking and the baby home, and everybody wants to see the new baby, mm -hmm. and you had to come home without a baby. Yes, for uh, five weeks. Yeah. I had to do that. And how long was your older daughter in the hospital before she went home? The same amount of time, about four or five weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's, it's incredible that we've come so far, oh, you know, with, with babies. And obviously, they both did very well. Yes. Miss Madison is doing extremely well. <laughs> and she's having a wonderful time here in the hospital just uh, exploring all things. And that's a good sign. <laughs> it that absolutely she's a healthy is a good baby. sign. So, Dr. Campbell, when parents take their kids home for the very first time from the NICU, they're scared to death. They're worried something really bad might happen. Do you have any words of encouragement and words of advice for them as they take their babies home? Well, I think that uh, we always enc encourage parents. I think probably the most important thing is for them to spend as much time with their baby while the baby's in the hospital so that they can get to know their sure. child. Um, and that, in a way, will help a little bit with the transition home. Um, in terms of resources to support the transition home, again, I can't stress enough, having a good yeah. primary care provider that the parents feel comfortable uh, talking with. Right. Also, depending on their insurance and the hospital that their, right. their child is cared for, home care Absolutely. Uh, with a nurse who can visit periodically. That's so critical. And also, one day they're going to be running around like Madison. That's the good news. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you all right. so much for your insights today. Check out these websites here for resources for premature babies right there on the internet. We've got preemies.org or prematurity.org, or you can contact the March of Dimes information line, and there's the number, and they also have a website, and that's modimes.org. For more information on today's topics, visit KeepingKidsHealthy.org.